on the show floor here at Broadband World Forum 2016. I'm here with Dino and Eric from the 3GPP. So guys, uh, obviously the 3GPP, well known for the development of, of uh, mobile uh, industry standards. And now there's a lot of work to be done on uh, moving the industry on from uh, the 4G world towards the 5G. But what does that actually mean for a body like the 3GPP? How are you approaching this? Yeah, so uh, of course, there is a, a, a component that is cyclical in our industry, which is uh, every 10 years or so, we also develop a new framework by putting aside the legacy and we develop a much more capable and much more performing framework, flexible enough to be able to cater for the applications which we don't know are out there yep. because we develop things much ahead of time. But we try to do a capable platform and flexible enough that we will be able to cater for the applications that will come. Now, this is a general trend that also in this case is happening, but maybe more importantly in this 4G to 5G transition is this other trend which has already started in 3GPP with 4G, and it is this expansion to other verticals and other services. Right. So we historically developed solutions for, the, for the, the access and broadband access solutions, and that was the, the bread and butter for a long time. But yep. uh, uh, in, the, uh, in the last years, we have been starting to expand the LTE 4G platform to these other ser services. And these are very promising market we're going to address. It's the IoT market, the Internet of Things, the vehicular to vehicular technologies. Okay. So all, all these new, uh, new verticals, they've been now uh, supported in our platform. And, and this trend now will continue in 5G because, again, given that we are designing this new platform, we are at the important uh, point in time. So we are going to take all the things we have learned so far and make sure that uh, the new platform will be flexible enough and powerful enough to also cater for these new opportunities being our industry has. And I guess also maybe Eric can expand a little bit more on that, given that uh, his group has been looking at, at the end to end how to service these verticals uh, from a system and to a perspective. Yeah, how does that manifest itself in, in the type of, of work that your group's doing? I think part of the goal is to have a, a system that's more capable and can address new verticals that, that today uh, are difficult uh, in terms of the scalability of the system to, to provide the, 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 uh, the amount of bandwidth that's needed, but more importantly, uh, lower latency or, or higher reliability applications are envisioned. All right. uh, we have some verticals that we've begun to address in uh, our existing system in terms of LTE, support for critical communications, as an example. Uh -huh. And this is not a motivator for 5G specifically, but this is an example of where a, a, a new vertical market segment with its own technology needs has been engaged directly with 3GBB, and we've very successfully, within two years or three years, provided them with solutions. And we see similar things happening in, in other areas with other technology areas, for example, with automotive. But there are many others. Uh, Internet of Things applications have uh, potentially much greater demands than we could meet with our existing system okay. when one imagines some of the use cases uh, and some, some various uh, entities in the market. Uh, the IMT 2020 goals, NGMN have looked at, at particular metrics for for our uh, what would be a successful 5G system, and and there the the goal for scalability would extend beyond the number of, of devices that could be present in a, in a given cell. Now all of these things are relative, and, and technology continues to develop uh, independently. The LTE system, in general, is, is to support many, many different applications. What is distinguishing about 5G is that we're going to allow for, through, through network technology called slicing, and through radio technology, which will allow for, for quite a bit of extensibility, very specific support for verticals that may not be general purpose, so right. what would support one application, maybe an augmented reality or tactile internet application, would be completely different tech, 
a different form of the same technology for, say, Internet of Things, where where you have very, very different demands. Okay. That sounds like it's adding multiple levels of complexity to the kind of development work that the 3GPP has to do. So how are you handling and, and, and coping with this? Is, does this mean more working groups, more teams, more involvement from multiple multiple vertical sectors to, to bring their ideas and have input into to yeah. what 3GPP is doing? Because the obvious consequence of this expansion of the 3GPP in these other verticals and market segments the obvious consequence has been that even the 3GPP as an organization has significantly grown in number of companies which now are attending. And you can look at the website and the list of members. It's quite stunning. It's a large number of members, many, many companies that you, you, you could not imagine before. Right. And there even the structure of 3GPP has yeah. changed. We've added working groups. We've realigned yeah. our, our entire organizational structure to provide greater uh, capacity and specialization. For example, we have a critical communications applications working group right. specifically to address that vertical. And the same thing may happen in future with more verticals. So 3GP is fully committed to supporting these new verticals all the way through the standards process, whatever is necessary. Another example is uh, RAN1, where the physical radio protocols and, and system were developed that has expanded from being maybe 250 people to what, now over 500? 500 people. Wow. <laughs> A single group, yeah. And they have multiple concurrently meeting sessions to meet this demand. Okay. Uh, it's quite, the organization, the scale of the organization now is quite massive and has grown up. This poses challenges to manage it, but again, like Eric said, we are coping with that, we are adapting, and we are adapting very well so far and we are continuing to deliver and we are on a trajectory to deliver i mean we have a, now a clear plan to deliver a first version of 5g in 2018 uh -huh. so we have that with some uh, important milestones along the way we are gonna build on that we release 16 and so the so despite the organizational challenges we are still on track to serve the industry i guess uh, Right. Yes, we well, I'm sure there's a lot of willing and support from the industry because 3GPP is an incredibly trusted organization that, in, you know, the, I mean, there's an entire global market that now everybody relies on yeah. and that's all built around the kind of the work that the 3GPP is doing uh, over the years from, you know, uh, really coming to prominence with 3G and into 4G. Um, so the 2018, uh, that, that timeline towards those first specs for 5G, that's all still on track, even though you've got all these different uh, components and, and inputs coming in from lots of different places? Yeah, that is, uh, as I said, this is uh, on track, and uh, we established uh, together the radio groups and the system groups a roadmap to get there with a so set of milestones, which will uh, allow us easily to get there, because otherwise, of course, you leave it to chance that uh, things can go off track. Yeah. But we established a roadmap and init some initial targets. We know a little bit more what we are going to do. Still some scoping and uh, down selection will happen. But now we have some initial targets of what we are going to do. We have some roadmaps and we have a clear uh, plan to get uh, the first release of the standard out in 2018. Okay. Dino and I have also pioneered the use of, of uh, many more project management tools. So we do budgeting of our time where in the past it, it's been a lot more chaotic. Right. We're also working quite a lot to coordinate our two organizations right. at the project okay. management level. Okay. Well, it sounds like uh, a, a, a massive challenge, but something that, you're, you, that you already know how to meet, and obviously you know how important it is to the whole industry. So I'm sure everybody's going to be doing everything they can to help you like, meet those goals and meet the timelines and, and help this industry move forward. So thanks very much for joining us today, sharing this vision, and it'd be great to, to hook up in another year's time and find out how this has all developed and how the industry has moved forward. So thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.